So I thought I'd show you guys the whole truth, the whole thing, a whole day in our life, off grid, in the winter, in the woods. Could you live like this? Most people love a wood stove. But do you love a wood cook stove? The news is good for something. For bacon and eggs. <laughs> Breakfast is your favorite part. I know, of the every day. single morning. Yeah. I'm like, bacon and eggs? Can we have bacon and eggs? That's homemade cream and homemade honey. I know. There we go. Coffee that looks like milk. That's my favorite. Mmm. <laughs> milk and honey with a little bit of... So this winter has been like mild and, wow, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> this winter has been mild, there's been not much snow, like it's been easy, except it's also terrible because like it's just kind of gray. Mm. Wow. This might be a little embarrassing, but. Why is it embarrassing? <laughs> because I'm looking at the clock. <laughs> what? Why are you looking at the clock? Because it's like I'm eating breakfast and it's 10 o'clock. It's a rough morning. <laughs> Penny is like, hello? Doesn't anybody hear me? Oh, she's pregnant. There is she's no, no food. Still. We are going to feed her right now. We're gonna do some chores. We're gonna get Penny some nutrients. <laughs> then we're gonna go on a little snow blowing date, Rose and I. And uh, Christina's gonna do some schoolwork. And what are you doing? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Kezi is gonna do everything else. Things are in production around here. We have a secret project. Coming up, we're gonna show you 
You'll see, actually, in our next video, you're gonna see that thing. Kez, what are you doing? I'm getting water. This is how we get water. And this whole roof collects rainwater. And it goes into some tanks. We have a video on the whole water system, you can see that. But the point is, we have a pump in here just so that, basically, so that we can use the washing machine. There you go. This is the only sink that actually has a working tap in the whole property. And that's our water fill station. This thing is an engine that I destroyed. Those sparkles, not supposed to be there. That's like the edge of the bearing. Don't know if you guys can see that. Ugh. Oh boy. So this, <laughs> that's a piece of the bearing. It like melted out. Oh, there's other ones that have that too. I know. So the project is, since I blew up the motor, is to make the motor better. So what do you think? 4.6 liter straight six stroker for the Jeep. If you want to see us turn wood into electricity, the next video, there it is. Unless it's been all sun and we know it's perfect, we come in here and check the power. So we're at 66%. The solar is incredibly pathetic. 31 watts. We've got like 3000 watts of solar, available solar. So we're running at 1% right now. 1%. and Clyde and our cow Penny and they're all very hungry. I'm getting excited. The reason the round bales are brilliant is because essentially the entire bale is like a thatched roof. Yeah, right. So it's just layers and layers and layers of straw or, or hay going the same direction. Yeah. So really like the outside inch, literally sometimes a couple inches gets wet. But the rest of it is like 100% dry in there. Right. Okay, Clyde, you ready? Grab that other side. Yeah. Ooh. That one is. Is it not in or is it just jamming? Yeah, I think it's not. What's your thing? Yeah. Doing. Oh, it's hitting it's the hitting. bar. There's too much ice. This bottom needs to go in more. There's too much ice in so here. Easy.
bought a $40,000 piece of property and then we eventually, a few years later, bought a $40,000 piece of equipment and it turned our property into a million dollar property. So 40,000 plus 40,000 equals 1 million. Just take it easy down that hill for pin it going up and I'll be up there just clearing a spot for it. Julia to back up in here now. Okay, keep going. Perfect. Keep coming. Keep coming and then straighten out. Her wheels are in the snow here. Okay. Go forward a foot. Right there, that's good. Perfect. Go park the truck. Thank you. <gasps> oh. Go! Oh my god. That was close. <laughs> One common misunderstanding about like an off-grid power system mm -hmm. is that you just can't have any normal things, like electrical things. Yep. For example, the garage door openers. Right. Initially, you're like, oh, you're gonna have to have manual openers. But here's the thing about solar power, for example, is what you have a limited amount of is energy, like stored energy. But you can actually power like pretty near any normal thing. But like those electric door openers, they hardly use any energy because they only work for like 10 seconds a day. So you can have a ton of normal things as long as they don't consume tons of energy, like just like constantly running. For example, the fridge and the freezers, those are by far the biggest energy consumers because they run all the time. But like all the other kind of things, you can have those. Is this your favorite chore? No. No? No. Which one is? Out of all the chores, you get to pick your favorite. Milking the cow. Milking the cow? Yeah. Hmm. Where does this one rank in your list of favorites? Like, is it near the top, near the bottom, kind of in the middle? Close to the bottom. Close to the bottom? <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Huh. So there you go. It's not all like peaches and cream. Sometimes you have to do a chore you don't like. There it is, full gas tank. We're surrounded by forest, which means we're just surrounded by fuel. And we're heating our house, and we're heating our shop, and we're cooking on it. And I'm really excited, but 
in the next video, we're gonna be turning firewood into electricity. Nice. How was it? Really good. It was really good. Mm -hmm. This was that halibut we caught this summer. You might have seen, who was it who caught that? Was it Christina? Christina or Julie, I think, caught the halibut. Mm. Okay, we gotta go for a walk before we lose this tiny bit of sunlight. I love that wall of firewood. It's like, uh, what's that like? Wow, it's like a tank full of gas on a road trip. Or like a big fresh batch of corn nuts. <laughs> or, or, or a root cellar full of potatoes. Ooh, you wanna see the root cellar? Yeah. Turns out the root cellar has still not caved in. Minus two. But the inner chamber, just above freezing, just like three one, degrees is perfect. Perfect. Like one big left over from the poutine truck. Oh yeah, and then these are our home. These ones are all our home. Ooh, ones. little babies. <laughs> all over here. Nice. Oh no way, Rose! You have been very busy making the cheese. That is awesome. I can't wait. Me too. Gouda? You made Gouda? Yep. Wow. The Gouda. Oh, man. Oh, oh this one I'm excited about. Yeah, that's the yeah, Oh, and there's Sarah's, Sarah's cheese, cheese still. Yep. Yeah. Put half of it back in. That's the cool thing about cheese, is it just gets better. Yeah. It's in here. Oh! A uh, litter box. Looks like a litter box. No way. Here we go. I kind of look like the carrot was on fire right there. <laughs> oh man, you hear that? That's so crunchy. <laughs> mm, Midwinter carrots. This is like, this is the kind of thing that, this is like why we're here. Just to grow carrots and then eat them in the winter, our own carrots. The root cellar. It's like a fridge. It's a, it's a... Walk-in fridge. It's a big deal. It's a huge deal. Yeah. I don't even know how I survived without it I beforehand. Know. Well, you barely survived. Barely. This place is kind of like put to rest for the next six months. And all we're going to do for six months is eat things <laughs> out of our root cellar and our freezer <laughs> and burn that huge stack of firewood. Yeah. That's how it goes. Of course, of course, we might sneak away to a wonderful place and do some spearfishing. In winter, it's like you're almost hibernating. Like so much of the work is done. We've got tons of food stored away. We got tons of firewood stacked up. And there's just not like that much work to actually do, right? No. Like a lot of the work is just like, Making making work. meals, yeah, like it's making meals and cleaning up meals and, you know, we clear some snow. Hey! Hi. Ivy? All right. Well, good riddance to that six hours of sunlight we had today. I was thinking we should show you the, uh, I don't know, the windfall that we got in our deep freeze. And this is, I don't think it's the world's biggest deep freeze, but it's Costco's biggest deep freeze. Oh yeah. This is all the butter that Rose has been making this fall. Tons of butter. Schnitzels. Ooh, schnitzels. Breakfast sausage. We got a bison this year. North America's largest animal. Here. And we have stuffed it in this freezer. 
Oh, that's a messy one. It is. Bison backstrap steaks, huge. <laughs> we butchered one and a half pigs we kept for ourselves. Uh, we caught a whole bunch of salmon this summer. And yeah, butter and I don't know what else. Oh, peas from the freezer. Oh yeah. Or from the garden. Peas in the garden. Peas. And that's about the right ratio. Yep. 22 cubic feet of meat and a bag of peas. And Julia, what are you doing? Ooh. That looks nice. Yeah. Mm hmm. We're building ammo belts. Is it ammo belt day? I guess it is, yeah. So is this the gun sling or the. Oh, that's a guitar strap. This is the guitar strap. Look at this. It's the maple leather guitar strap. And you can write down all your thoughts. Oh, yeah. The maple version of the leather bound journal. Julia took the big step this year of really going into business. She's got her products in four stores in Northern BC. So if you're in Northern BC, you can go buy her stuff in a store like Nachaco Outdoors in Vanderhoof, at Cutter Creek Outdoors in Prince George, at Coral Lanes in Dawson Creek, and Backcountry in Fort St. John. So Julia is trying to make a go of it. And this is her workshop right here. This is where all the magic happens. And you can, you're still selling it online. Yep. On the website. Yep. That's our website. If you want to order one of her things, it's at uh, it's gridlessness.com. Rose and I were talking on our walk, and we were just thinking how life, our life here, I think it's a lot to do with the off grid and the homesteading, but it's just it's very seasonal. Like we used to live a normal, you know, in the suburbs and. And this life is different. Like everything changes from winter to summer. And you know, in fall, we're just busy uh, hunting and gardening and trying to, you know, butcher pigs and chickens, whatever, and stacking up firewood. And now like winter comes, it's like, it's done. Like there's really, we just kind of keep the place going, but really we just get to like hibernate. Rose, you look like a dream over there. <laughs> I guess I'll just edit video for a bit. all stringy mm -hmm. homemade is kind of special these days right like you don't get it very often and then you realize that there is so much reward in growing and harvesting and making your own food i'm just telling you because i'm trying to like share the good news here like you can make your own food in your own cabin and life can be great That's right. you probably need a rose though I'm not sure. I'm not sure how this goes without a rose. <laughs> hey, Kez, wouldn't be quite the same without Mama. Hey, we already know it's gonna be excellent. Oh, Mom. Oh, hot. And this is what we do all winter. We just eat. It's kind of like hibernating, but where you keep eating. We're going to have a special treat, and that is you guys are going to get to watch how Abigail does dishes here off grid. <laughs> this is going to be like a special event. Check it out.
Maybe just someone can get some water. water in here. He is my strength. 